I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. I'm sure Captain Magnuson would have loved to lock you up. You know, th that's another part that mystified me. Boy, you have got some wild imagination. Well, now, all this is true. It is not fantasy. They were going to kill Governor Dawson, and I had to stop him. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Our hot number is 1130, and now we want your number. Who knows? Maybe it'll be hot before you know it. On a postcard, put your name, address, and phone number. Send it to the $25,000 WNEW lottery game. Then wait for your name on the air. You don't have to hear your name to win, but if you do and you call our special hot number phone line within 30 minutes, we'll double your prize. And what a prize. $100 worth of New York State slot machine lottery tickets, or $200 worth if you call us anytime your name is aired between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. It's fun, it's easy, and everyone who enters will be eligible on April 30th for five drawings, each for $1,000 worth of Olympic lottery tickets. That could give you a chance to share in the $2 million Olympic lottery jackpot drawing July 18th. Enter now, enter often, because beginning Monday, we want to make your numbers sizzle. Get your name and number to the WNEW Lottery Game, Box 1130, Grand Central Station, New York, now. The winning begins Monday. Blanche and Tony are deeply in love. It was their perfect night, a beautiful night, with all the proper ingredients for murder. Honey, pass the whipped cream. I will not. Blanche, I love whipped cream. Do you love me? Of course I do. More than whipped cream? Tony, you're overweight as it is. Now, Thelma... Thelma? Thelma's doing volunteer work for the American Heart Association, and she was telling me... A lot, knowing Thelma. Tony, I'm serious. A fatty diet is no good for your heart. I don't want you having a heart attack. But, honey... Tony, you could use a lot less honey. You've been living on sugar alone. Now, we're going to get the American Heart Association's cookbook and make our diets heart healthy so we can be together for a long time. Oh, Blanche, you're sweet. Sweet? Yeah, I know. Contact your American Heart Association for information about a heart-healthy diet. We're fighting for your life. This is Vincent Price. Listen to the sounds and voices that can shake a nation. Now, if there's no further business at the Good Buddy CB Club, I would like to welcome back our in-house storyteller, electronic wizard and good buddy, Mike <laughs> Simmer down, folks. Well, we haven't seen this bucket mouth in almost two weeks. <laughs> Tonight's speaker is, of course, no stranger to the club. He's a man who has raised the art of CB transmitting to new heights. Yeah, supposedly his own digit scan has put him in contact with UFOs. A man who has received signals from the Russians in... Uh, what was that, Mike? It was their space tracking station in Omsk. Oh, now, right, right, good buddy. <laughs> a man who claims to have access to over 1,200 frequencies through his special scan and chip. Well, his stories get better every year. That's what you say. I give you the 1976, 77, and 78 winner of the Tall Tales Award, none other than Michael Big Ham Hammond. Well, now, I'm... I, I know you're not going to believe this That's one, right. but I have. <laughs> All right, come on now, let's give him a chance. This should be a good one. All right, we're waiting on you, Big Ham. Where have you been? I just came back from the state capitol. <laughs> uh, and why you were up there? Because of a conspiracy on the governor's life. Oh. Uh, say that again. I was in the state capitol because of a conspiracy. On the governor's life. Oh, this one we gotta hear. <laughs> you just met Michael Hammond, affectionately known as Big Ham to his fellow citizen band radio operators. A man filled with incredible stories. A man, quite frankly, never taken too seriously by his peers. He is about to relate another flight of fantasy, or 
Is there an actual plot on the governor's life? And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Ham That Cried Wolf, by Ken Gerard. Our stars, Parley Bear and Olin Soule. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. All those April showers are really coming down. So are prices during Sears Home and Yardware Sale. Like prices on lawn care needs. Check these. Save $2 on a 20-pound bag of weed and feed, just $5.99. Save $6 on Craftsman Drop or Broadcast Spreaders. Your choice, $23.99. Craftsman 4.5 cubic foot wheelbarrow, now only $44.99. Cut $10. Prices are really coming down during Sears Home and Yardware Sale. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Sale ends April 28th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available to most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. It appears that Big Ham is about to spin another incredible story. This tale will be almost impossible for his fellow sea beers to swallow. Perhaps he'll be laughed right out of the club, or perhaps he'll be killed for what he knows. <laughs> All right, hold on, everybody, hold on. Big Ham, that is the most outrageous statement you have ever made to this club. <laughs> A conspiracy. Well, yeah. no, no, it's the truth. Uh-huh. And I suppose it was the truth about the CIA? Everything about those arms and the men in Latin America? You swore on a stack of FCC code rigs that it was on the square. However, there was no proof. I heard that whole episode. It was the truth. Sure. Why don't any of the rest of us hear any of these earth-shaking events? Because I have a special digit scan, and I worked on my chip. You know that, man. Uh-huh. Now, what happened when I came over last month? We were supposed to monitor your Russian friends. I listened for almost three hours. Nothing. Well, I... I, I can't explain it. <laughs> okay, okay. Just get on with this one. Well, about... Two weeks ago, I was riding home from the ballpark. I guess it was about 10.30. Anyway, I started flipping channels. Finally, I was jawjacking with some trucker. Roger, your last big hand. The cars are stacked real bad coming out of the ballpark. I'll take 183 like you advise. Should save me time. Over. 10-4, Coyote. Where you heading? Shaky City with a rig full of two-wheelers. Over. Well, lots of luck. Watch out for Smokey with a camera near the Northwest Interchange. 73, Big Ham out. So I'm stuck here forever. Let's see if I can get something on Channel 9. Maybe there's an accident holding us up. This is Car Delta Bravo, 2 9 or 4. Request ambulance at 113 Maple Avenue. We have a male about 65 with a compound fracture of the right arm. Over. Oh, sure about that. Well, might as well try to listen to some of those high frequency channels. I didn't buy this digit scan or rebuild my system for nothing. Let's see. That turns the scan on. Now a little step up. And we'll see. Maybe I can hear what the CIA's doing. You're sure these transmissions can't be overheard? The 
special frequency crystal was manufactured for us. It's the Council's private communication system. If the Council says it's safe, that's good enough for me. I don't know. It's not like the old days. The contact helper? Not yet. We just created a safe house. And Al Rojo is timing the event. Well, where is he? You want to talk to him? He's out. Where? I don't know. You can't ask a guy like that too many questions. Besides, he barely talks. But he's the cream of the crop. Helper wouldn't settle for less. Dawson will never know what hit him. You'll be in and out of that office inside a minute. Yeah, sure. What about Helper? What do we hear from him? On the ninth. We'll have a three-way chat about 2,200 hours. Not soon enough for me. I never went for a top guy. You're playing a big game now. And that's what I heard. I couldn't believe it myself. Here are two jokers and some guy named El Rojo were planning to murder. Well, at that point, I didn't realize who it was or where it was going to take place. Oh, that is the biggest bunch of bull I have ever heard. Not because of those two characters, Tampa or El Rojo, but you've trapped yourself this time. What do you mean, man? I'm telling it almost verbatim. Big Ham, every sea beer in the nation knows that Channel 9 is reserved for emergency use only. Right, how do you get out of this one? It's a public service channel for police, fire, medical, any kind of disaster or crisis. If those people were on nine, everybody and his brother would have heard them. Now explain that one. Well, it, it, it wasn't exactly nine. I, I told you. I switched over to my scan and stepped up. I picked up a real high frequency. Sure you did, just like all the other times. That scan isn't worth anything, and neither is your computerized chip. Yeah, sure. Well, anyway, Mike, what happened next? They, they finally stopped sending. I really didn't know what to make of the whole thing, but then, yet yeah, then, I was sure one of my Wiseacre CB buddies was putting me on or had tinkered with the set. You know, the, the whole thing seemed like an act. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, we should have thought of that to teach you a lesson. But I checked everything out. Set, scan, wiring, and it was all right. I even went over the equipment again, not a speck of trouble. Well, just for kicks, I went back to the ballpark the evening of the 9th, got in a car in the same spot, tuned to 9, then switched over to the scan, stepped up, and sure enough, the same two guys were on the air. Control calling Tampa. Do you read? Over. I copy control. We're on a go pattern. You speak with Helper? Yeah, this morning. He's got the man all set up for that day. Looks like a clear path. You'll do that number in his office, right? Correct. We got the first appointment right after the swearing-in ceremony. About 1.30. Fine. You'll find the car in the north lot. That's to the left of the Capitol. It's a blue Pontiac. We'll have it parked in row L. The keys will be taped behind the right side of the front bumper. El Rojo says he wants to forget the car. Simply shoot Dawson, walk out of the office, and then pick up the plane. I'll buy that. Follow his lead. Now, let me speak to him. Hey, he's not here. He went to a concert. Oh, that's typical. How can this guy be so cold? He's like ice. This is no ordinary hit. We're not going for some two-bit mobster. We're going for Governor Dawson. And you're getting paid. So don't complain. Sure. Our next transmission will be at 2300 hours on the 11th. We'll have a three-way hookup. Now, Rojo won't talk over the set. Not him. You and me and Albert. Out. My hair was standing on end when those two birds signed off. I only prayed they didn't realize I was listening in. These characters and that El Rojo were going to kill the governor, Charles Dawson. Our governor, and it was on inaugural day. Oh, I knew I had to stop him. <laughs> Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, get the full power of the maintenance-free Sears 48 battery for a full $7 off its regular low price. The Sears 48. On sale now, just $42.99 with trade-in. And get great savings on Sears' best-selling belted tire, the Dynaglass Belted 25. Now, save $14 to $28 on sets of four at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Fashion speaks on gossamer wings through dresses and skirt sets and wonderful things. Filmy clouds of prints in a palette of colors. That's sheer dressing from Sears. 
for sheer drama. You'll love the way light flitters back and forth through fabric you'll hardly believe is Easy Care Polyester, making each dress a sheer pleasure to care for. In Mrs. Half Sizes, Mrs. Petite, and Junior Sizes at most larger Sears retail stores. Sheer dressing from Sears. Today's man of action wants slacks that look good, feel comfortable. And at Sears, you'll find great fitting slacks with dash and durability. What really makes it all happen is Fortrell Polyester Gabardine, woven with two-way stretch that moves with you through a day's worth of action. In popular solid colors a man can feel comfortable with. Any way you look at it, these stretch-woven permapressed slacks hold up handsomely to a hard-driving summer. That's style, sense, and satisfaction at most larger Sears retail stores. These characters and that El Rojo were going to kill the governor, Charles Dawson. Our governor, and it was on inaugural day. Oh, I knew I had to stop him. <laughs> Big hand, this is your best story in a year. It's the truth, I swear I heard every word of it. Yeah, sure it is. And why didn't you go to the police? You know Captain McNewson as well as I do. I did. I went down there that same night. Uh, Captain Magnuson, uh, remember me? I sure do. Sit right down, Mr. Hamilton. How you been? Have you seen any extraterrestrial beings this week? Uh, well, I, I'd like to forget I ever came to you with that story, but this is something else. Mm. A matter of life and death. Can I talk to you confidentially? Don't I read you, good buddy. Haven't we worked together before? I mean, your club is always helping the police. You can trust me. What's up? Well, I was listening to my CB, and I heard... Well, there is a plot to murder Governor Dawson. It's going to take place right after the inauguration, exactly at 1.30. Now listen, Hammond, and listen good. Get out. If you ever set foot in this station again with some crazy pack of lies, I'll lock you up for disturbing the police. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, I knew McNerson had sense. How could you have dared go to him? Especially after the story about contacting the alien beings. <laughs> you, you really think this is all a big joke, don't you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Only we've ridden down this road before. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Please finish. Then what happened? Well, boys, I, I couldn't believe all this myself. I didn't know where to turn. The police didn't believe me. I had to keep going if, if I was going to save the governor. Now, this was a real crisis. On the night of the 11th, I made sure that I was going to pick up their conversations. But I was plenty scared. Perhaps they'd realize I was monitoring their plan. This is Control. Have you hooked into his tampa? I copy. Help, we're on the line. Talk. I understand El Rojo scrubbed the car. Affirmative. He feels that traffic after the ceremony will be a high negative factor. You concur, Elber? He's the one pulling the trigger. It's his neck. We've set up an alternate car. The plane out of the country will go as planned. Elber, are you sure we're going to get into the governor's office? I've told you that a dozen times. Now let me give the running schedule. The inauguration starts at 12. We'll be through at least by 1. It's a few minutes from the rotunda to Dawson's office. Say it's now 1.15. The governor plans to receive the state justices and the majority speaker for no more than ten minutes. I know you'll be in that office on the money. Should we uh, wait to send room? Damn it, no! I told you, walk into the office exactly 1.30. That's the beauty of the whole plan. You walk in, you kill him, and walk right out. The whole thing should be over in 45 seconds. Yeah, but the security guards, suppose we're spotted. Follow orders, there'll be no problems. How many times have I heard that one? I'm leaving the air. Tampa... Out. Oh, what do you think? It'll go down. Rojo's good. Yeah, I know. Counts a contract for Tampa, too. What? Yeah, he's a dead man. Lost his guts. You better take that as a lesson, bright boy. You're playing with the big guys now. Don't screw up. Control out. <laughs> Tell you, it curled my hair listening to that plan. Double killings, the, the council. You know what I think? What's that? 
You are the biggest liar I have ever made. Amen to that! That tale defies, well, even television. I think you should change your handle to Pinocchio. Oh, really? Some joke. The governor's life on the line and no one believed me. Well, let me tell you, that's no joke. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Join hands with people everywhere. Each of us can do our share in cares for say for children. This year, people of all nations are joining hands to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Through care, you can provide the families of these children with the means to grow their own food, to build medical facilities, safer water systems, and schools. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. Help make it a better place for all the children. Crusade for Children Overseas, Box 576, New York 10016. What in the World Happened in April, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. April is Admissions Day for Maryland, admitted in 1788 as our seventh state, and Louisiana, admitted in 1812 as our 18th state. George Washington was sworn in as our first president in April of 1789, and the first U.S. Congress began regular sessions at Federal Hall, New York City. In April of 1860, the first Pony Express run was made from Missouri to California in 10 days. The motto, In God We Trust, was first stamped on all U.S. coins in April of 1864. The Navy's first submarine, the USS Holland, was commissioned in April of 1900. Navy Commander Robert E. Peary and Matthew Henson reached the North Pole in April of 1909. What in the World Happened in April is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000, toll free. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. <laughs> It appears that no one believes Big Ham's latest story, an assassination attempt on the governor, but nothing in the press. Incredible. Or is it? Yeah, you got a lot of guts there. <laughs> Did you really go to the state capitol? Well, naturally. I wasn't going to let El Robo, whoever he was, gun down Governor Dawson. And you expect us to believe that you got there before the inauguration? I grew like a madman. Oh, there's no smoke he was going to stop me. My fist too much to swallow. <laughs> I made it to the Capitol in one night. Rolled up in front of the executive offices about 10 the next morning and went straight to his chambers. Is this the governor's office? Oh, that's right. How can I help you? Well, I, I've got to see him. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> On inauguration day? <laughs> You're right. I bet you want tickets for the ceremony. Nation, man, this is a crisis. I've got to see him. Uh, without an appointment, it's impossible. Not today. Look, you've got to let me in. It's crucial. I've heard that one before. You have yes, to have... Yes, 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 an appointment. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I I'll give you $50 just to meet him. Good morning. Please, I've got a lot of work to do. The inauguration is right on top of us. Oh, you think I'm an autograph hound, that's it. Mister, I don't know what you are or who you are. But if you don't leave, I'm calling the security guards. What do I have to do to make you listen? Okay, tell you what. Here's a ticket to the ceremony. It's a good seat. Enjoy yourself. Be my guest. Good morning. I don't want that. I, I want to see him. I've got an important message. It's vital. Just one moment. What's that statement for? I told you, it's a security man. Sorry. Are you having problems? Yes, this man refuses to leave. Oh, no. Hammond, what are you doing here? <sighs> Captain Magnuson, am I glad to see you. Just what I needed. You, you know this man? Unfortunately, I do. Listen, I gotta speak with you. Uh, Captain, can you handle this business somewhere else? Sure I can. Come on, Hammond. Come on, I'll, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. 
You know, I thought being selected to be on the security staff was going to be an honor. But now... You're protecting Dawson? Just a temporary assignment. It'll be over tomorrow. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I'd like to see the appointment secretary. Hey, you don't have to push us out of the way. I've been waiting for several minutes. I don't have all day. Come on, Ham. Let's get some breakfast. Yeah, huh? hold it. Say, uh, don't I know you, mister? I certainly hope not. Now, your voice sounds familiar to... Yeah, skip it. I uh, want to double-check our appointment, Mr. Redmond, Mr. Tampton. Yes, sir. Uh, right here. You're set for 1.30 tomorrow. No problem. Thank you. Just checking. You're Tampa! Hmm? I know that voice. Magnuson, it's him. He's the guy I was telling you about. It's Tampa, and the other guy must be El Rojo. Oh, 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 this man is mad. I've never met him before. Come on, Hamlet. Let's get out of here. You're making a scene. You're not, but it's him. He, no, he shut couldn't... up. Come on. Now move. Everybody's looking at you. Yeah, but, uh, Magnuson, you've got it. It's all right, folks. It's all right. I'm taking this man into custody. <laughs> Are you a fool? But I've got more proof that this is another one of your imaginary episodes. But it did happen that way. Ask Magnuson. Go ahead. Call him. I bet he's at the station right now. No, I don't have to. I saw Carl Magnuson last night at the South Valley CB Club meeting. He's got an arm and a cast up to his shoulder. It was his first evening out of his house in almost three weeks. Hey, get out of that. And by my calendar, that takes in the 13th. But he was there. He was assigned as an honor guard for the governor. That's right. Keep up the The use of your frequency scan, Magnuson being where he wasn't, and the plot. That's all bull. The Channel 9 garbage. You know, we're not dumb. If you're going to lie, make it about things we don't understand, like, like spaceships. But yeah. Magnuson was there. Sure, sure. And how about explaining why this Tampa fellow just happened to be there at the same time? <laughs> I, I can't. Well... But I, I guess I scared him off, because as the captain was shoving me out of the office, I saw him moving down that hall pretty quickly. There he goes. Come on, let's follow it all. You're not going to start something with a total stranger. That's Tampa. Yeah, and I'm, what's his name, the other fellow. El Rojo. Look, I'm positive. We've got to get to the governor. I'm not going to let this happen. Why am I doing this? Okay, Ham, come with me. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Kenyon, but this is quite important. I think this man has a story you should hear. All right, you've interrupted me. It's about an attempt to assassinate Governor Dawson. Are you the man that created the disturbance in the outer offices? <laughs> yes, sir. Magnuson, I think your judgment in this matter has been extremely poor. We don't have time for this. I, I apologize. There's enough detail work to do with a ceremony less than a day away. Now get him out of here. You take care of schedules. Speak when you're spoken to, mister. Captain, I'm going to report this incident to your superiors. Now take him out of here. I've got plenty to do without hearing wild tales. The majority speaker and state justice... Your helper! What? Sit down, Hammond. He's in on it with Tampa. Arrest that man. Come on, Hammond. You've just bought yourself a trip to the slammer. Get away from me. I want that man in jail. I see it. Clearly. Come here, Hammond. He's helper, aren't you? I got him. Hey, you let him get away. Go after him. Yes, sir. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. <laughs> Nobody's ever taken a shot at me before. I was scared to <laughs> death. Shoot at you. Magnuson never did that. I told you he's been in town since he busted his arm. Everybody knows that. <laughs> well, that's a cover. Anyhow, I hightailed out of the executive building, ran to my car in the underground garage, and was almost going to pull away. Hey, you. Come in. You get away from me. I want to talk. I bet you do. Come on, we got to follow him. Right on, I did. Losing. I knew that was Tampa. I'll take this corner. Yeah. Sorry, lady. Didn't mean to cut you off, but I... Can't shake him. I'll run this red light. Maybe they... Darn, they ran it, too. Oh, I gotta step on it. Come on, car. Let's do our thing. Oh, no. I'm low on gas. Look. 
I've got that needle almost on empty. Gotta run for it. Okay, big ham, settle down. Easy, easy, easy. I better get on the freeway. I'll take this ramp. He's still behind me. Uh, the highway patrol, I've never been so glad to see Smokey in my life. Well, you bet I'm pulling over. Hey, there goes Tampa El Rojo. Uh, Smokey, you saved my life, you sure did. Okay, buddy, don't worry, I'm not giving you any hassle. <laughs> Boy, this is like a bad. Yeah, fantastic, big ham, fantastic. This sounds like something right out of the comic books. Hey, man, Superman. Okay, then what? Then you were thrown in jail and escaped, correct? No, th that's the strangest part. Uh? The Smokey took my license, went back to his two-wheeler, made contact with somebody. He, he must have talked for five minutes. I just sat there looking for Tampa to return, but he, he didn't. Anyway, Smokey gives me back my stuff and tells me to get lost. What? Oh, oh, honest to Pete, Glenn. Oh. He, he gets on his bike and continues down the freeway. I was dumbfounded. <laughs> well, you, you know, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> you bet your bottom dollar. Well, anyway, I, I got back in the car, pulled off the freeway, got a load of gas, and, 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 and just kept moving. Finally, when it got dark, I pulled into a shopping center to kind of sort things out. Okay, big hand. Now, get a grip on yourself. Just try to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Nice and quiet. Don't panic. Don't panic. You're the only one with a clear head. I'll call in. No, no, no. He'd never believe me. Magnuson? No way. Maybe he's in it, too. I better monitor their frequency again. Yeah, they don't know about my special scanner. I better flip it on. What do you mean you let him get away? Well, he was picked up by some highway cop. You think we're going to start shooting in that situation? Well, yes, you should have killed both of them. Oh, that's dumb. Real butchly dumb. Then we would have had all of the police on our backs. I don't want that man running around loose. Find him and kill him. Look, it's easy for you to say. Listen, I want to abort this shit. Nothing's gone right from the beginning. It's a bad job. Now let's call it off. Never. The council has ordered it. We go as planned. Now try to find that man. How? Circulate pictures? He's bound to come back here. Have El Rojo stake out the building. You're worried. I can tell it. You're the one that's messing up. If we don't get Dawson, you're in the frying pan, not us. Just make sure you're on time. Remember, 1.30 sharp. Helper? You find a guy. You kill him. It isn't in our contract. Tampa out. Oh, I was really shaken after I heard that conversation. Oh, my gosh, Ham. You just happened to pick up those people at that time talking about you? That's right. I used my scanner. Stepped up. While you were parked in a shopping center in the middle of nowhere, you catch their frequency again, just like that. But I, I couldn't believe it myself, but I did. Here, we can't believe it ourselves, either. Well, I, I, I guess I was just lucky. No. No, I had the right equipment. Yeah, and that part about the two-wheel smoky letting you go without a citation? I'm sure Captain Magnuson, if he was there, which he wasn't, would have loved to lock you up. You know, th that's another part that mystified me. Boy, you have got some wild imagination. Well, now, all of this is true. <laughs> it is not fantasy. They were going to kill Governor Dawson, and I had to stop him. This sure my mom is dressing me up in pretty things from the Sunny Bunch collection at Sears. That's right. She'll look fresh and feminine in these dresses and separates. I can choose from frilly, colorful dresses, bouncy skirts, pants, and just the right coordinating tops. Sizes 7 to 14. In easy care fabric that's machine washable. Whether I'm going to a birthday party or just school, my Sunny Bunch clothes make me feel special. You are special. Thanks, Mom. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Strike a chord for spring with Baby Chord Fashions from Sears Junior Bazaar. Baby Chords aren't for babies, but for juniors with an eye for style in textured jackets, straight skirts, trouser pants. Stripes of blue and white that are really narrowed down. That's Baby Chord. To complete your outfit, pop on pretty little blouses. 
also from Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Hey, look! In here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value Dress Shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value Dress Shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value Dress Shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. <laughs> Vincent Price again, and here's the concluding act of The Ham That Cried Wolf. Well, everybody's gone except you and me, Big Ham. <laughs> you really cleared the house with this latest tale. Fella, you gotta do something about this habit. It's bad. You're gonna lose all your buddies, now I mean it. All right. Maybe. Just maybe. Some of those other stories were a touch overblown, but this one... No, sir, Len, I'm telling this one straight. You made a fool of yourself tonight. Hey, but will you let me finish? I can prove everything. Everything. Okay, okay. I'll stick it out to the bitter end. Well, I drove back to the Capitol grounds about 8 o'clock the next morning. I had a plan all worked out. Well, almost worked out. <laughs> I didn't see you behind that pillar. You'll never make it. Stay away from me. Stay right where you are, Hammond. Don't move an inch. Now keep your hands at your sides. Step back, Mr. Kenyon. I got him. Fine work, Captain. You've apprehended a dangerous man. Bull, you're behind the plot, not me. Shut up, Hammond. Put your hands behind your neck. I'll take him into my custody now. Good. Move, Hammond. All right, Hammond. Sit over there and don't move a muscle. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. That will be all. I intend to have a special accommodation written into your records. I appreciate that, sir. <clears throat> You'll excuse me. I want to check some final details concerning the honor guard. Can you handle Mr. Hammond here? No question about it. Hammond, don't make any more trouble. What did I do? I told you to shut up. And don't get off that chair until I get back. Yes, sir. I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, I guess it's just the two of us, isn't it? This isn't going to work, you know. Why not? Everything's on schedule. I've heard you. I've monitored you people with my scanner. I won't let you get away with this. With what? You come in here with a wild story of the assassins, death threats on the governor? He's one of the most popular men in this state. The most popular we've ever elected. Plus, he's got a very good chance at the White House. So that's it. Now it's clear. Well, maybe to you, but it's a story to the rest of us. In a couple of hours, Charles Dawson will be sworn in for his third term, and after that, who knows? What about 1.30? And his appointment? Ah, good morning, Governor. Morning, Mr. Kenyon. Is this the man? Yes, sir. He's the one responsible for the trouble. I don't know who you are, sir, but this episode won't go unnoticed. But you don't understand. Now listen, mister. Don't you move until I tell you. Got that? You sit right there. Yes, sir. Good. Don't budge. All right, Mr. Kenyon, please come with me. There are some other details I'd like to clear up before the inauguration. <laughs> I could hear the inauguration going on somewhere on the Capitol grounds. And as governor of this great state, I promise to uphold the law and carry out the mandate of the people. We shall work together. We shall plan together. And we shall build this state's future together. You all right, Hammond? Yeah, I'm just fine. Well, Big Ham, you've come a long way this time. Seems to be for nothing. 
And if I'm right? Nothing's happened. Only in your head. Everything under control, Captain? Oh, yes, sir. He stayed put for a change. Good. That means we can proceed on schedule. I'm sorry you missed the inauguration, Mr. Hammond. It was a beautiful ceremony. Magnuson, will you come with me, please? And you, sit there. Yes, sir. I sat in the governor's private waiting room. Gosh, it seemed like an eternity. There was a big old clock facing me, counting down 127, 28. Finally, at the stroke of 130. Right this way, gentlemen. The governor is expecting you. Tampa! El Rojo! Be quiet, Hammond. You'll pay for your meddling soon. Why don't we solve this situation first? You are to stick to the schedule. Come this way. Uh, gentlemen, come in, please. I've been expecting you. Uh, Governor, don't! That... Shucks. He doesn't believe me. Nobody does. I'll get him when they come out of there. <laughs> you come in? You're not dead. They didn't shoot you. What happened? Come into my office. Where are they? I saw Helper, Tampa, and El Rojo walk into your office, but but it's empty. Oh, I, I, I've imagined the whole thing. I, I guess I am crazy. Hardly. Uh, sit down. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to sit in my chair. Right there. What? That's right. Take the executive chair. Me? What, what's going on? Well, Big Ham, I owe you a debt of gratitude. You know, you saved my life. But there were no shots. And you're unharmed. Yes, thanks to you, Mr. Hammond. You did uncover a plot. Governor, I, I, I didn't think you believed me. Well, not at first. It seems your reputation has really traveled. However, there had been something in the wind for a long time, and then Captain Magnuson heard your story. Magnuson? What's his connection with this? Well, he works for me in a highly confidential capacity. He's quite a thorough man. You see, after you told him your fish story, he started checking, and then all of a sudden, all the pieces of a real plot seemed to fall into place. You mean El Rojo and Tampa and... and control? Exactly. You see, we had to play their game until Magnuson was positive that your tall tale was really true. But why did you hold me here? Because you were the only one that could provide positive voice identification. I get it. So you arrested Tampa and El Rojo when they went into your office? And Helper, better known to me as Mr. Kenyon. See, Magnuson and his undercover team were waiting for them as they walked into this chamber. We disarmed the whole group and took them into custody. Uh, you'll have to appear in court when the trial comes up. Oh, you can count on me, sir. Good. Uh, maybe this will prove to my CB buddies that I'm not a liar. Oh, I can't wait to tell everybody. Uh, well, that's uh, going to be a little problem for you. You see, this episode is going to be kept out of the media until we snare control in the council, and that might take months. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Look. Tell it anyway, Big Ham, because I'm sure they'll never believe you. <laughs> right, good buddy? Now, now that is sneaky. <laughs> that, that is downright unfair. Yes, it is, but <laughs> you're just going to have to live with it. Well, I'll get Magnuson to prove the story to my club. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The captain's going to have a solid alibi. See, he won't back up your story till the proper time. My big chance to crow, and, <laughs> and you take it away. <laughs> well, Big Ham, my sources tell me you've done a good amount of crowing prior to this. <laughs> Maybe this is poetic justice? It could be. <laughs> could be. Uh, but at least uh, you're, you're safe, and, and that's all that really counts. Thank you. Oh, I, I, I feel real fine about that. Yes, sir, that, that, that's enough for me. Uh, I think you're really going to feel good about this, too. Michael Hammond, please rise. Sir? Under the powers vested in me by this state, I hereby deputize you as special agent in charge of citizen band communications. You will report to me exclusively. Any and all contact with me shall be through the use of the state's police channel. Uh, 
Congratulations, Big Ham, for a job well done. Why, well, I'll, I'll be doggone. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, uh, my handle is Executive One. <laughs> showed me around the office, had a big tray of sandwiches, and we shot the breeze for a couple of hours. And he had just been inaugurated. You know, Lynn, he is one fine person. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I headed home that afternoon. It took me a whole day to get back here. Now, how about that? Isn't that some story? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> It's a big bunch of fairy tales and a whole pack of lies. A lot. You still don't believe me? Of course not. Okay, try this one on for size. Can I use your set? Sure, sure. Help yourself. <clears throat> big Ham calling Executive One. Big Ham calling Executive One. Do you read me? Over. This is Executive One. I copy. Over. I'm out of control. Be cool. Be natural. Take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates you because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great! I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. Your baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib dresser and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. At Sears, we know how important appliances are in your home and how important it is to you to keep them operating in top condition. That's why Sears wants their customers to remain satisfied with our products for years to come. That's why we service the Sears appliances we sell to help make sure that your appliance will continue to give you quality performance. If you have a problem, just call Sears Appliance Repair Service. We're nationwide and listed in the white pages of your telephone directory. Sears, where customer satisfaction is one of our most important priorities. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Ham That Cried Wolf was written by Ken Gerard, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Parley Bayer and Olin Soule. Also heard were Lou Krugman, Vic Perrin, Jack Crucian, True Boardman, and Lee Vine. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CDI. Your lung association says smoke's not just your affair. That smoke screen that you pop around to lose non-smokers' air. It's bad for kids and older folks with lungs not up to par. It's damaging for you, of course, but your smoke travels far. Your lung association says please keep this thought in mind. It's double damage all around and doubly unkind. So try to keep the habit and give everyone a break. Please do it for your life and breath and everybody say. Your lung association and you know the
that cigarettes are a breathing hazard. Smokers, please don't add that extra offense. Give us a break for life and breath. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Is your car equipped to handle emergencies? Well, here's a list of essential items which will enable you to better handle an emergency situation. A car jack and lug wrench should always be carried in case of a flat tire. Be sure you know how the jack operates and the correct procedure for changing a tire. Flares and reflectors provide warning to other motorists that your car is stopped and both are essential safety items. A tow strap or chain enables a car to be pulled out of the mud or the snow. Battery jumper cables help a motorist solve a dead battery problem quickly. A small fire extinguisher can prevent a small problem from turning into a large one. But you'd better keep it in the passenger compartment where you can get to it quickly. A first aid kit can come in handy in all sorts of minor medical emergencies. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Let's listen. And Kathy, I'm hanging on to my good looks 